I have a simple sermon today, but an important message. I want to remind you that there's a place of rest that you must strive to enter into. A few years ago, I arrived at an accident scene just a few minutes after it had happened. A high school boy had been hit by a vehicle. The paramedics had not yet arrived. He was in great, great pain. He could not speak. I prayed a prayer for him standing at the accident scene. I asked God that this young man would live, not die. I prayed earnestly, but my prayer was not granted to me. He passed away later, and somewhere those who took care of him got the terrible news of his death. Now, I'm not sure if he was a believer, nor am I sure whether those who cared for him were believers. But what I do know, what I am sure of, is that if he was a believer, that he is now in the place of greatest rest. In earthly imagery, he has kicked off his shoes, he has taken off his socks, and he is in a breezy meadow with God, a place where he can no longer be hindered or molested by the world, by his own failure, by his own flesh, by the devil, where he has no enemies, a place where toiling to survive and toiling to make sense of life is gone, a place where there is no bucky that comes from nowhere to hurt you, a place with full, complete, unrelenting freedom to dwell and to commune with God, a place with no worries from within and no worries from without. You see, there is a great promise that God himself makes to every believer, and that is the promise of rest, the promise of rest. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. In our text today, Hebrews chapter 3 running to Hebrews chapter 4, the promise of rest is discussed. And when you consider it, you understand that the fullness of that promise is not now. The fullness is in the future, at the end of our lives. Then we enter into it into the completeness of it. Maybe one of the greatest errors we make as believers is to think that when we were born again, our lives should be free from all substantial trouble and toil and suffering. And maybe the second greatest error of our generation is that we try to sidestep trouble and toil and suffering instead of going through it by faith as a passage. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews corrects that error. In our text, he reminds us that we are just like the Israelites in the wilderness before they entered the promised land. We are like them also in Exodus. You see, the Israelites were saved from the bondage of Egypt, just like you and I were saved from the bondage of our sin and death when we believed. And as the Israelites entered the wilderness with trials and temptations on their way to Canaan, so too you enter the wilderness after being saved, with its trials and temptations on your way to God's promised rest. In fact, the true church, made up of all those who have been born again by faith, is a wilderness generation. We are aliens, travelers who must face the hardships of the wilderness. We are pilgrims, citizens of heaven, not earth. We are passing through the wilderness on our way to the promised rest. We need to grapple with that reality. And I want you to notice that it's not uncommon for New Testament writers to regard the Christian life as a new exodus. Luke describes Christ's death in Exodus terms. Luke chapter 9 verse 31, Paul declares Christ to be the Passover lamb. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7, Peter says Jesus is the lamb without blemish or spot. 1 Peter 1 verse 19, we as the church are a wilderness generation. When we come to faith, we make a decisive start at the beginning of our faith journey. 
But I tell you, that is not enough. I'm aligning myself with another commentator. He says, and I agree, that start must be followed by continued faith and steadfast obedience if we are to pass through the wilderness into the great rest. Because the difficult wilderness journey to the promised place of rest starts directly after our conversion. And our faith is tested as things happen to us that are not easy to understand or explain. A bucky comes from nowhere and causes me, a Christian, much pain. My marriage is not as I expected, even though both my wife and I are believers. I struggle financially. I can never get ahead. I struggle with my health. My child loses his way. My parents get old and I must take care of them. But I don't have the money and I don't have the time and I don't know how I'm going to do it. The world around me rejects my God and expects me to do the same. One day I wake up and find out that cancer has come to someone whom I love and cherish. Difficult things happen in our wilderness journey and we are not exempt. And these things, these difficult things, they have the power to steal our faith. Just as it happened to the Israelites in the wilderness, when things got tough, they stopped believing in God. They gave up on God. They stopped believing God's promise that there was still ahead of them a place of rest away from all these troubles. And because of their unbelief, they never entered the promised land. And so the writer of the letter to the Hebrews is reminding you not to be like these Israelites. He's calling you to a deep maturity. Do not lose your faith in the wilderness journey of this life because of your troubles and your suffering. Be even more resolute. Push on, push through, keep the faith lest you lose your rest. Be like Joshua and Caleb who did not fear the giants when everybody else did. Be mature. Do not grumble in your wilderness circumstances. Count rather your blessings. Stir up your spirit with the promise of rest, rest that lies ahead. Keep your faith to the end. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews says this, so then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. Do you know that God rested on the seventh day after he had made creation? I think maybe our generation has forgotten this profound truth. He rested. And do you remember that he invited you and in fact instructed you to do the very same, to follow his example, to follow his pattern, to rest from your work is in fact a creation ordinance. We're deeply wound in it. And this creation ordinance to rest is confirmed later on in the fourth commandment in Exodus chapter 20 and Deuteronomy chapter 5. The foundation of that rest being God's rest from his work in creation and God's rest from his work in our salvation. And you are invited to enter, to share and to celebrate that rest. Do you celebrate God's rest? You know, the Seventh-day Advent Church members keep the Sabbath from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. Our Presbyterian, Methodist, Dutch, Reformed and Anglican forefathers kept the Sabbath on the Lord's Day, being a Sunday. But think about it. To keep the Sabbath is a most powerful statement of faith. And you are told to strive to enter the rest. And if, if you keep the Sabbath, you're making a statement of faith to yourself 
You're encouraging yourself. You're reminding yourself of this great rest weekly that lies ahead in your difficult life. And this this rest, this Sabbath rest, is good when it comes from your heart and not from duty. It's a celebration. Reminding yourself week for week in your wilderness journey that there is still a great rest to come. You are proclaiming to the world your faith in God in observable terms. You are being obedient in actual fact when you've been disobedient in not keeping it. So I encourage you today to be obedient in keeping the Sabbath not in not in a, a sense of duty, but in a sense keeping it from your heart with great joy, looking forward every week to that space where you will symbolically take off your shoes and commune in a new way with your family and with God. I close with simply this. Strive, be diligent to enter God's rest. Understand that you are part of a wilderness generation. You're a pilgrim. You're passing through. Life is difficult. And things are going to happen that will push in to stealing your faith. But stay faithful and obedient. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. If you do... You will enter God's rest. May God bless you so. Amen.